Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and today we are looking at the Hi-Fi Man Golden Wave Prelude headphone amplifier and preamplifier. This is a 2,500 US dollar piece. This was sent to me directly from Hi-Fi Man for review. They have asked nothing in exchange other than a fair and honest evaluation of this product, which you are about to give. They have made no effort um, to influence my opinion on this piece in any way. If I find any retailers out there that I am an affiliate link partner with that sells this, I will put affiliate links down in the description and label them as such so that if you like this product and you like what I have to say about it and you want to help support the channel, you can use one of those affiliate links. But as of the time of this filming, I am not aware of any retailers that I am an affiliate uh, uh, link sponsor with sponsors the wrong word, that I'm an affiliate link partner with that carries this so that is not an issue at the current moment. All right, I'm also gonna say here that I am actually really impressed with this, uh, this piece here. And I think it stacks up really well to some of the competition, like the Vioelectric HPA V281, the V550 in there, the Headamp GSX Mini, the Ferrum Ore, and so forth. Um, so I'm gonna unpack all of that later on in the uh, comparison sections of this video too. But uh, this is a good one. And if you wanna know why I say that, stick around after shameless self-promotion and find out. Hi, I'm Wave Theory's Human Companion, and he wants you to know that your support of this YouTube channel helps keep the reviews coming. If you enjoy Wave Theory's honest, thorough style, then make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the links in the description below to sign up for the Patreon or send him a tip through PayPal. All right, enjoy the musings. Gonna do this different vantage point than usual here because um, this thing is heavy. Mass is rated at about 6.5 kilograms, and uh, there's not a whole lot, you know, there are no handles or anything like that on it to really grab onto, and so uh, it's going to be hard to just hold it up. So we're going to do this little bit different vantage point here for this review, which I've done before, not often, but we'll do that here so you can get a feel for, uh, you know, actually looking at the product while I talk about it. Okay, so again... 2500 US dollars. It is a headphone amplifier and a preamp. It is a fully balanced class A design. Hi Feynman claims that it has 10 watts per channel of output power from its balanced output and on into a 32 ohm load. They also specify that it is, I have it written down here, not memorized, hold on one second, that it is, it has a six watt per channel output into a 64 ohm impedance load. Why does that matter? Well, hi fi Men's own Susvara is right about 64 ohms in impedance, and so they are kind of, in my view anyway, putting a stake in the ground saying that, hey, this is a good headphone amplifier for their top-of-the-line headphone, at least playing our magnetic headphone in the Susvara. More on that in a little bit. All right, but it also does uh, gives pretty uh, hefty output power even up into the high impedance ranges rated at one watt per channel output at 300 ohms and uh, 540 milliwatts out per channel output at uh, 600 ohms and, uh, and so forth. So a lot of output power on tap here, again from the balanced output. If you want to use the single-ended outputs on here, which I will show you as part of the unit tour in a moment, you can expect half of the power output that I just uh, quoted to you there, which is going to be enough for most headphones out there, but again, it's a balanced product. You should try to use this the balanced output as much as you can. And the good news is, is even if you have a single-ended DAC that you really like that you want to use this, this has a single-ended input, and it does a really good job of single-ended to balance conversion internally, so there's no issue using the single-ended input on this if you want to use it that way. And I will show you the inputs and the outputs and the connections, all that, in a unit tour here in just a moment. All right. Um, a real quick story on this one and like where it came from and uh, this is like my kind of internet sleuthing because believe it or not Hi-Fi Men does not give me a whole lot of information about their stuff. I often know about as much as you can learn about it just by poking around on the internet and all of that and, uh, and so forth. Um, so my understanding is that Golden Wave is, uh, is a company, an audio maker based in Hong Kong and Hi-Fi Men bought them out. So the Prelude was a model that Golden Wave had 
in their uh, their product line already, and now Hi-Fi Men has come along and has asked them to produce more units, putting their funding into it, and then also like you know selling it under the name Hi-Fi Man. Sorta. When we get to the unit tour, I'm going to show you there's no Hi-Fi Men branding on the unit itself. It's it's Golden Wave on there. All right, so. If you were somewhat rightly skeptical about hi fi -Man's ability to develop the electronic part of the audio chain here, or the electronics part, like amps, preamps, and that sort of thing, because they've had kind of a mixed track record, uh, to put it mildly, in terms of the quality of like amps, DACs, preamps, you know, that sort of thing. If you were coming into this skeptical, I get it because of hi fi -Man's past, but again, they are not the ones who designed or built this amplifier that is from the company Golden Wave. And as a friend of mine pointed out, Golden Wave would have been a great name if myself and Golden Sound had co collaborated on an audio brand. We didn't. Okay, um, Golden Wave is a name that existed here. And I will link to Golden Wave's website that is all in Chinese. So you'll, if you're here in the United States or elsewhere, you'll need to use Google Translate. But you can still kind of figure out like what they're about and all of that if you want to look into them. So I will put a link to that website down in the description. All right. So with that, let's take a closer look at the unit itself and talk about the uh, do the unit tour and the build and the feature and the inputs and the outputs and all of that. So let's cut to that. Front panel view here as we do unit tour again. This thing is heavy, so I don't want to hold it up a lot. So we'll do a close up shot this way. All right, so what we have across the front here is we have a variety of headphone outputs. You can do dual three pin balanced XLR outputs, but then either of these also will accept a quarter inch single ended plug in there as well. Now, if you use single ended, you're only going to be using one of the two balanced amp channels there. You'll still get stereo sound, but you're only using half of the amplification going on in this thing. Then we have the pretty standard um, four pin XLR balanced output right here which has some kind of a mark on the plastic now that I look at this. I don't know what that is. Did not affect sound at all. I probably scratched it plugging something in. All right, then we have a 4.4 millimeter Pentacon balanced output here as well. The one complaint I have about this is that this balanced output here is recessed into this front plate a little bit. And so if you have a really thick, heavy 4.4 uh, millimeter Pentacon plug, it may not go all the way in because the outer edge of the recess will stop it. If you saw my review of high-end headphone cables, the 4.4-millimeter uh, plug on the Elatech Inferno was one such plug that does not fit in there, just FYI. Volume knob centered here that uh, is attached to a nice Alps potentiometer, turns very smoothly, um, also has a nice feel and resistance to it. Also very good channel balance. I did not notice any cha channel balance issues at low volume levels, like when it was down here or anything like this. Okay, really nice there. Now, one thing you are seeing is you can see the reflection of my fingers and all of that um, in the black paneling here. This reflective black plastic is all over here and it is a dirt and fingerprint magnet so you might want to have something to wipe it even the black matte finish on this thing is aluminum here just like you know oil marks from fingerprints and all of that get left on it easily just keep that in mind if that is something that might bother you all right then we have a little display right here and then three buttons on the front right here so Input select between the XLR balanced and the RCA uh, single ended. We have the gain level here, which just switches between high and low. And then we have the output. You can either set it to the headphone amp, which makes these four outputs live, or you can do preamp and you know control the output level from the preamp outputs from the volume knob right here, if you wish. Okay. Uh, I will hold the phone up here a moment and do kind of a flying unit tour uh, on this here in a moment. Just wanted to show you the, uh, the front panel here while it's nice and stable. You know what, before I fly around the unit, I will just turn it around and show you the back panel. Okay, around here on the back panel, power input over here. All right, and then we see we have a full slate of preamp outputs here. Balance XLR dual three pin, 
RCA, and then the matching complement of inputs over here. And the XLR inputs are upside down. I don't know why um, the, the shit Bifrost did that. I don't exactly know what the reasoning is for that, but that's how it's done here, and it doesn't really matter. Hey, okay? that's just how that one is. All right, now I'm gonna pick the phone up off the stand here for a minute, so it'll go handheld. So if that bothers you, just be aware. I will try to keep it steady, but there are a couple of things about the build that I wanna show you. So let's take a look at that. All right, thing number one. We see right here, Prelude Golden Wave logo. And if you noticed on the back panel, there was another Golden Wave logo. There is interestingly no Hi-Fi Man branding on the unit itself. It comes in a box that has Hi-Fi Man branding. Okay, right there it is, Hi-Fi Man. Okay, Prelude, fully balanced headphone amplifier. But again, this amplifier is actually made by Golden Wave. The other thing I wanted to show you here is that this aluminum here, first of all, there's a little bit of the fingerprinting that I'm talking about, even on the aluminum here. It shows up quite a bit on that. Anyway, this aluminum chassis material here is all one piece of aluminum, okay? Even round on the back that I just showed you, Ugh, it's heavy, okay? Even around on the back, the I.O. panel here is a cutout in this one chunk of aluminum that goes all the way around the unit, is vented on the sides. It is actually vented underneath to, okay, vented underneath. And, oh boy, it is, it is a beast, all right, okay, and well, oops, I just scratched it. Lesson learned there, can I clean that off? Okay, so don't do what I just did. Anyway, more about those fingerprints there too, see that? Okay, um, where was I going with that? And then the front panel, right here has an opening. This is an aluminum plate with the plastic display screen cover on it there that slides right out. But one big solid chunk of aluminum here. Why on their website, they argue that that helps with resonance issues and all of that. And I can link to hi -Fi Men's website where they talk about that. Okay, but that's part of the weight. The other part of how heavy this is is the big toroidal transformer on the inside of it, okay? it's six and a half kilograms of mass. So that's, uh, that's pushing, uh, what, 16, 18 pounds probably, pretty close to that. All right, there's the unit tour. Back to me on camera talking about other things. All right, so now that we're back from the unit tour, let's, uh, let me just kind of sum up here that overall the build quality on this is pretty good and you did see that i had that unfortunate like i nicked the finish okay the the black matte finish on this aluminum panel up here but i mean just listen to this that is solid like that is only a surface feature abrasion there that i put on this it's not going to affect the unit performance at all okay but this thing is heavy it is solid it is well made also, it is again class A in its construction. It gets very warm. No power switch on the front. There's just the master power switch on the back. So I think most people are gonna end up just leaving it on most of the time. Now, it does not get dangerously hot. It does a good job dissipating the heat from the circuit board and all of that, but it gets very warm to the touch and warm enough to the point where you wouldn't want to just rest your hand on it for all that long. It's not going to burn you instantaneously. You know, it's not a, a stove top or anything like that. But there is some, some serious thermal output that comes out of this thing. So you are gonna to need to be careful in terms of if you stack any gear on top of this, you're gonna to need to make sure that they can handle the heat or else they need to get out of the kitchen, so to speak, all right? So that is just something that you need to be aware of that this thing does need its ventilation and it puts out a large amount of heat uh, in, uh, from its operation there. Okay, 
Um, other than that, like I found the unit to be pretty easy to use. You can kind of learn like even in a dark room what just you have three simple buttons here and what they do. Okay, and then again, the only real complaint I have about it other than how easy it is to scratch this top surface is that recessed 4.4 millimeter Pentacon jack here, which I don't understand why that needed to be recessed because I, like that's going to limit like the size of the plug that you can put in there. Not the 4.4 millimeter part itself, but the barrel of the plug, particularly if you have a really heavy gauge wire um, like that Elatech Inferno that I mentioned there in the, in the unit tour. All right, but other than that, once it's on your desk and once it's set up or on your rack or whatever, it's uh, it, it's good to go and just sit there. It will get very warm, but give it its ventilation and, it, and it's still within safe ranges. I guess the only other thing that I could point out is that there is no remote control that comes with it. And I don't think that there is an infrared sensor on it either that you can use an aftermarket remote control with. So like if you wanted to use this across a room with a long headphone cable or something like that, you're out of luck. To adjust the volume, you either need to set the potentiometer where you want it and use a DAC or preamp for uh, remote volume control, or just keep this within arm's length. Okay. Now, let's move on to the sound here, um, and uh, we'll start by talking about the test gear that I used with this. So, the primary DAC that I used for uh, critical listening here is my Berkeley Alpha Series 2. DAC, which would have been fed via AES by a Singer uh, SU6 DDC. A brief time in here, I actually had Berkeley's matching Alpha USB DDC that a friend loaned me just to check out, so that actually got used a little bit uh, through this amplifier and that Berkeley as well. But in either case, I used a Sonor Ultra Rendu as a rune endpoint as the source of digital files there using either lossless and high-res local FLAC files, streaming the same from Cobas, or using local DSD files. Uh, through there, although through the Berkeley that does not do DSD decoding, so I'd have to use um, Rune's built-in DSD uh, PCM conversion. Now, uh, other DACs that I had on hand that I tried would be Shit by Frost Two Slash Six Four. You know, more mid-fi stuff. The uh, um, what was it called? It's right over there. Under oh yeah, the Black Ice Audio Glass FX DAC, which is single ended only. I tried this on here. Cord Hugo 2, which would have been uh, fed by its matching uh, Tugo streamer. Same file types that I mentioned earlier. Also got a run on this single-ended input on that as well. All that. So um, and so a few different DACs. Not as many super high-end DACs as I would normally like. I just didn't really have them in and at my disposal. But that range of DACs there just gave me a, a fair amount of insight into the, uh, um, the realization that this thing is actually rather DAC independent. Um, I did not detect that it was reacting poorly to any particular DAC combinations. And so we'll come back to that point in a little bit as well. Okay, uh, headphones that I plugged into this uh, are, are plentiful. Uh, I spent a lot of time using hi -Fi Men's own Susvara on this because again, I think this is really targeted towards Susvara owners or potential Susvara owners who might look at that $6,000 price tag, although don't pay that much. You can usually get a discount on that, but still look at that price tag and go like, and I have to spend that much again on an amp? 2,500, okay? Um, not cheap, but better than another, you know, 4,500, 5,000 again uh, to, to get an amp in there. So, um, Sasvara got used a lot. HU1000SE got used a lot on here. Focal's Utopia, the original, was plugged into here a fair amount as well. The Radiance I used, uh, Bayer Dynamic DT8, DT880 I used a fair, uh, a little bit in here too, as well as uh, JM Audio. You can kind of see one up there. I've got the XTC2 and two flavors of that one that I'm working on reviews for. That, those got some time on here. And were there others? There may have been, but I think that is enough to get us rolling and talk um, and see the pretty thorough evaluation there. I also connected the single-ended preamp output of this into my Parasound Z Zone Amp V3 or Zamp V3 speaker amp, which is uh, powering a pair of Yamo C93 Mark II speakers on my a desktop two-channel system. All right, so what did I learn from all of that? This thing sounds really good. Perceived frequency response. 
I would call it neutral warm. It is mostly neutral. It is not warm and quite to the level of like a Vioelectric HPA V281 is warm, but it is just trending in that direction a little bit. So there's a hint of warmth in there. The top end, particularly the air frequencies, uh, just a slight hint of roll off in there too. I went back and forth as to like whether or not that was actually true because the top end is very, very well controlled. Uh, through this amp and so I'm like okay is it just is it a control issue because I almost never got sibilance or piercing sharpness s's and t's like that sort of thing on this thing so like is it just excellent control or is there actually a roll off and I came down to I think both are happening there's just a slight bit of roll off in the air frequencies which again kind of aids towards a, a, a perception of this being just a little bit on the warmer side yeah in, in its presentation there um, the sonic background here like is just almost black void. It is not quite as dark in its noise floor as like a, a topping amp or other of those measurement chasing op amp based amplifiers are out there. Uh, it's not quite as dark as like the Vio HPA V550 that I reviewed recently, but it's getting close to that. It is quieter than my HPA V281 for example uh, in there on that. now. That's the perceived frequency response. That's how quiet it is. It's a very quiet amp, very dark sonic background and all that to the point where you often hear the noise floor coming in and out when um, like different samples are played in music. Okay, all of that. And you can debate whether or not that's a good thing. I like that, you know, an amp can resolve that because then I can trust it to show me all of the nuances of the music that is there and all of that that's supposed to be there. But very clean, very quiet mostly neutral in its presentation, but with a little bit of warmth and a little bit of roll off at, in the air frequencies up there. Okay. But everything else here, the control, the resolution, the uh, holography, like the spatial presentation and the terms of imaging and separation, the instrument and vocal separation and all of that. Excellent. The dynamics in terms of the impact and like how much you can feel it, the, you know, the hit and all of that are very good, maybe not quite class leading, but they are far from poor. Particularly, again, we'll come back to pairings in a little bit, but the Susvara in particular actually does become rather more dynamic on this headphone amp than most other amps near this price. Okay, we'll come back to pairings in a little bit. But yeah, the sound stage here is nice and big, but not like cavernous or enormous. It kind of does a good job of letting whatever your headphones sound stage is like come through like um, that. It doesn't really expand it, doesn't shrink it, just lets your headphone sound stage be what it is for the most part that I noticed. The lateral holography though, like side to side, the imaging and the separation, really strong. Okay, uh, very good. The depth dimension, not the best I have heard around this price, but also very good. Okay, the um, the bass extension, like there's a lot of like uh, low end rumble going on and all of that. And then that rolled up air that I talked about earlier, like it, it's still there, like it still reaches up and sparkles well, it's just not brought forward in terms of the presence, all of that. But um, Another, a thing that jumped out at me about the performance here is like room reverbs. Like anything that is recorded in a room, you hear the room so well on this through this amplifier. And it's like the reverbs just kind of hang in the space around you. And it just kind of puts you in it like an, an you are there kind of thing. It's the way that is done uh, because it sounds very natural and all of that. Another aspect of the uh, the performance here that stood out to me though is also, is the timbre. This has some of the best timbre I have heard at the price point. And timbre being like, do sounds, do vocals, do instruments, and all that sound like the real thing? Like, does a drum sound like a drum? Does a guitar sound like a, dr a guitar? Does a human voice sound like a human voice, etc.? At the price point, this is done arguably the best job I have heard with that so far. Okay, very, very strong there. Okay, so basically everything about its sound is reference caliber, honestly, at 2,500 bucks. And I think it sonically competes in a lot of ways with some headphones that are, you know, several hundred dollars more, or not headphones, some amplifiers, excuse me, that are several hundred dollars more than it yet. And we'll get to uh, more formal comparisons here in a little bit. Okay. 
Let's come back to pairings though, um, in terms of pairing with DAC and pairing with headphones. Now, I think I have limited data points with both of these, but the trends that I am noticing here in terms of its pairings are that it's both DAC friendly and rather headphone friendly in how it pairs. Like, okay, so like it's pretty transparent in terms of whatever DAC you plug into it. I didn't find any DACs that had a, were a bad match to this that caused some sonic issues that I have heard with some other combinations in the past. That didn't happen here. I really didn't even get the sense that it was likely to happen. I'm sure there are uh, um, DACs and preamps out there that it will not get along with. That's inevitable, but I suspect that number will be rather small. Likewise with headphones, okay? Um, the, paired pretty well with just about everything I, I threw at it. I think I may have forgotten to mention my uh, Fostex TH900 with a lot in Purple Heart Chambers on it. That was the one headphone that I was just like, yeah, I don't know about that one on this one. And it wasn't terrible. It just didn't liven up that Fostex and didn't bring its like mid-range forwardness and all of that in the 3K region. It's V-shaped, but that 3K region is a little bit too forward where it gets shouty and honky. Didn't bring that in as well as like the GSX Mini, which again, we'll get to comparisons in a little bit. But Susvara sounds really good on this. Like the, the Susvara um, has a lot of uh, dynamics to it, some good impact, some great bass extension. Sounds very holographic and all of that. Like it clearly, Hi-Fi Men wanted to get this out there under their name or at least associated with their name because they know they've got that, you know, infamously hard to drive headphone out there and like where it's not just an expensive headphone out by itself, but to get an amp that handles it well is a lot of money, like almost as much as the headphone again, often to, to do it well. This does a really, really good job with it. Like this does match and drive the Susvara very well here at 2,500 bucks. Okay, HE1000SE also sounded very good on here. Um, the original Focal Utopia, okay, uh, notoriously signal chain picky. I also really liked the sound of that on here. The timbre on that, like it smoothed out the tonality on the Utopia really well. The timbre was just delicious, okay, just sounded really natural. It's like, it's one of the amps that can really show you what all of the fuss is about with the Utopia when the Utopia gets it right, and it very often got it right in concert with this amp, okay? And that's saying something. So, um, this is, again, very good, okay? I really enjoyed listening to it. I really enjoyed reviewing it. It is a reference caliber piece. For further evidence of that, let's talk about uh, comparisons with some of the competition. And if I have a couple of them on hand, it'll come and stack on top of them here so we can look at them together. All right, so I wanna compare the Prelude here to a handful of amps, and I've got two of them here that I had in-house at the same time uh, to go with it, and that is the Headamp GSX Mini and the Vioelectric HPA V281. I have a what gear is my gear, which is the, you know, the excellent grammar uh, uh, title for just gear that I own and keep around as reference pieces, and this is one of them. So I will put a link to that review down below. I have a written review before I ever started the YouTube channel of the GSX Mini, and I picked one up not long ago. Well, it's been a few months now uh, since I picked one up again to have another amp to use around as a reference and all of that. It will get a re-review. Okay, um, here very soon, I hope, uh, very soon in the year, so stay tuned for that. Okay, and then um, I also want to talk about how the Prelude stacks up with the Vioelectric HPA V550, which I reviewed here very recently and was able to hear direct AB with the Prelude. I just had to send the V550 back to the friend who loaned it to me, so that's why it's not in this shot here. And then it's been like over a year now since I've heard it, but I have reviewed the Ferrum Ore and Hypso stack, which comes in at about 3,200 US dollars together that I wanna make some, just some general comments on like how it stacks up with the Prelude or how the, sta the Prelude stacks up with that. Um, 
as well. And I think we will start there because I can be the least specific about that particular uh, comparison, prelude to Ferrum or st to Ferrum stack, just because I didn't hear them directly um, next to each other. Now, the Ferrum is going to have the slightly more neutral signature. I think you're going to get just a, f a bit more flavor of warmth from the prelude than you are from the Ferrum stack. The Ferrum stack, though, you can vary the sound signature a little bit by uh, changing the output power of the uh, Hypsos power supply on it. So you can change it up a little bit there. The Ferrum stack does not stage particularly large. So if you're a fan of large sound stage, I think the Prelude is going to be more to your liking. Again, the Prelude doesn't really enhance sound stage or make it bigger than what your headphone already does. But I think more often than not, the Prelude is going to throw a bigger stage than the, the Ferrum stack is, if that matters to you. Although I suspect they will be very close to each other in terms of their holography, their imaging and their separation within their respective sound fields. Okay, but they, all, they are both massively powerful. They can handle things like Susvara very well and all of that. So just a quick comparison there with the Ferrum stack. Now, the HPA V550, since I don't have that here, that comes in right about 3,000 US dollars. So it's about 500 bucks more than the Prelude. Um, all of that. The, the V550 is going to have a quieter yet sonic background. Like the noise floor on that one is basically black void. The Prelude is not quite that clean and quiet, but it is getting very close. I think the Prelude also comes very close to, but does not quite catch the V550 in terms of overall refinement. Like the, the V550 just has this really clean, refined kind of buttoned up, put together, highly polished kind of sound to it. The Prelude is getting very close to that, but doesn't quite catch the, the V550 in that regard. I think that the, that the lateral imaging and separation might be just slightly stronger on the V550, just a little bit, okay? Again, splitting hairs, but I think the Prelude might be a little bit stronger yet than the V550 in the depth dimension with layering and that sort of thing. But again, very little bit. In terms of resolution, if I had to give a nod to one, it might be the V550, but oh, it's going to be close, okay? And, but I do think that the Prelude, everyone, you know, I very consistently liked the timbre that the Prelude was giving. I think it's very strong in that regard. So I think the timbre was a little bit more natural than the V550 was. The Prelude is the better match for Susvara over the V550. It gives a little bit more dynamic impact and oomph to the Susvara sound that is not present with the V550. The Utopia sounds wonderful on both of them. I think I might have slightly preferred the Prelude, honestly, but only very slightly. And if you were to tell me that you preferred the, the Focal Utopia on the V550 over the Prelude, you will get no grief from me because they are very, very close. Okay. Um, is the, the V550 worth the 500 bucks more? I mean, maybe, I don't know. It's getting very close there. Um, and I'll come back to the value question in the Prelude here uh, at, the, at the end. All right. Let's talk about the comparison with the two amps that I have here on hand in front of me. We'll start with the GSX Mini here. Comparing the GSX Mini to any other headphone amp can be a challenge because the GSX Mini is one of the most headphone picky headphone amps I have any experience with. Like the sound that it puts out can radically change headphone to headphone and it can also radically change the headphones themselves and their sound. If you don't believe me, put a Fuzztex TH900 series headphone into this thing and just watch it, well, not watch it, listen to it, come alive, plug that headphone into almost any other amp and just, yikes, okay? All right, um, but for the ones that it does have in common, they both drive HE1000 SE pretty well. They both drive Focal Radiance pretty well, and they both drive the Bayer Dynamic DT88600 pretty well. So I used those three to do a comparison with these two. And I found that the Prelude, I preferred its take on timbre. Again, uh, that was pretty consistent. It uh, is also a little bit warmer sounding, and it's a little bit more laid back and smooth sounding than the, the GSX Mini is, and it's also slightly more resolving. Okay, uh, we, the 
GSX Mini here is $1,800 in its base configuration. It goes up to about $2,000 with a potentiometer upgrade, I believe. So it is not quite as expensive as the Prelude. Um, but again, with headphones that they both can are comfortable driving, it just I do think the Prelude has an overall technical advantage in terms of just being more technically proficient. A little bit better timbre, a little bit better resolution, a little bit better holography, and that sort of thing. Now, the presentation on the Mini, though, is a little bit different. It is a little bit more forward and aggressive, particularly through the mids and the treble. So again, not as laid back sounding, it's a little bit more forward, a little bit more in your face, and a little bit more like, hey, listen to me. So if you have a more laid back headphone, the GSX Mini has a better chance of livening up its presentation, which you may or may not like, okay? Um, so I mean, that's to me is the comparison. I think they're both very DAC friendly though. So the Mini, although it's very headphone picky, seems to not really care what DAC you plug into it. So once it's really about a headphone pairing there, though I think the Prelude likely in time will be found to be almost, maybe not quite, but almost as DAC friendly as the Mini is. It certainly is more headphone friendly though, without a question. Okay. The VIO HPA V281, which has been my personal high-end reference here for a long time now, okay, well over two years, getting close to three, I think. Okay, it, um, Vioelectric is doing a limited run of a special edition of this, which just changes the, the potentiometer on it, turns one of the quarter inch outputs into a 4.4 millimeter pentacon output but otherwise the amp internals of it are they left alone because it has a sound that a lot of people love and is understandably so in my opinion which is why i've kept it around but they are going to sell that limited uh, run special edition for 2800 us dollars here near the end of 2023 and that's important because like that tells me that Vioelectric thinks that this amplifier is still about a $2,800 amplifier. And given my experience in listening to amps, I absolutely agree with them on that. Okay, so uh, the sound that you get from the Vio here, the V281 compared to the Prelude is you get a warmer presentation yet. Like there's just more warmth uh, to the perceived frequency response. And it's a little bit more rounded and robust sounding in the low end most of the time. Okay, um, it also, is, I think the Vio here does a little bit better in the depth dimension, like even against the V550, its newer uh, sibling model, I thought the, the depth and the layering of, this, of the sound stage was stronger on the V281, and I think that also carries over uh, in comparison to the Prelude as well. Resolution between the, the V281 and the, and the Prelude is dead heat. I listened to several different headphones, um, trying to parse those two. If anything, maybe I would lean slightly towards the Prelude, but uh, I cannot confidently state that that's going to be the, the case all the time. Okay. Um, and there were some tracks that I would like go back and forth and be like, okay, did I prefer this track on the V281 or did I prefer it on the Prelude? And honestly, it was about 50-50 okay, on that in terms of, uh, you know, just which one I liked listening to more on there. Now, the noise floor on the V281 is going to be a little bit higher, so it is not quite, it like, does not quite have that black void sonic background that the Prelude has uh, to go along with it. So that's something to keep in mind if that is important to you. For most headphones, the V281 is going to slam harder in the bass too, because like just the low end on this thing is one of the stars of the show. It has several stars of the show sonically, but the low end, the extension, the impact, and all of that, and the low end is is very impressive on this one. The uh, the Prelude is just a little bit more laid back and refined, generally speaking, in this one, just a little bit. Okay, but it, it also does not have quite as much impact or slam, particularly in the low end, as the V281 does. With the exception of the Susvara, though. The Susvara is good from the V281, but not as good as from the Prelude, okay? And, the, and the, the, on the Susvara, that's where it flipped back, where I thought that the Prelude became the more dynamic and impactful amplifier as compared to the V281, because I think it's just a better match for the Sus. Okay. But based on what I am telling you here is I'm saying that this $2,500 amplifier from Golden Wave slash Hi-Fi in here, the Prelude, stacks up very, very well to a lot of its similarly priced and slightly more expensive competition. 
So I really like this, and one of the reasons that I really liked it is because it does stack up so well with its competition. Like, I know that it's a good amp because it conf compares very favorably to other very good amps, okay? So uh, as far as its place in the market, it, it, it competes right there in like that, you know, to call it $2,000 to $4,000 range. Like, I would say fairly comfortable. It's, it, it's comfortable in that range. All right, so let's wrap this up then. Prelude, excellent new addition to Hi Fi Men's lineup of electronics. It is an excellent headphone amplifier, all that. It drives their flagship Susvara headphone, a notoriously hard to drive headphone, very well. But it also drives a lot of other headphones. Also other like very picky headphones like the original Focal Utopia drives that very well. There were really not any headphones that I plugged in here that I didn't think sounded at least good, if not very good to excellent on here, save maybe the Fostex TH900, which might be even pickier yet than Utopia, okay? I get the sense that it is very much a generalist in terms of DAC pairings too, so I, um, it does have a little bit of a neutral warm and more refined presentation but not overly refined to where it just sounds too smooth or too relaxed it doesn't have great diamond dynamics but it has pretty good dynamics the holography is excellent the resolution is excellent it is just a very good headphone amplifier it does run a little bit warm so you need to keep that in mind it is very heavy there is no remote control so you either need a DAC or preamp that you can adjust the output level of or keep this within arm's reach to change the volume okay but at $2,500, I think it's also a pretty good value because it does stack up very favorably to my hearing to several amplifiers that are a few hundred dollars more than that. And it comfortably outperforms some headphone amps that are a few hundred dollars cheaper than it. So again, it falls into the market really well. It competes very well with the Vioelectric HPA V281, with the Vioelectric HPA V550, with the Ferrum. Uh, or in Hypso stack with the GSX Mini. Okay, those are some heavyweights. Okay, out there uh, in our in our hobby right now, and it is right there with them. And at twenty five hundred dollars, I think uh, tips it a little bit towards the higher value proposition up in that price range. So. Hi Fi Mint Golden Wave Prelude, excellent, easy to recommend. Um, I enjoy having it around and I hope I get to keep it around a, a while longer to uh, continue listening to it because I do enjoy it quite a bit. All right, so I am Wave Theory. This has been my review of the Hi Fi Mint Golden Wave Prelude headphone amplifier and preamp. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you haven't yet. Leave a comment down below if you haven't done that yet. Check out my PayPal and my Patreon and generally do those things you do to support YouTube channels. And as always, enjoy the music.